Eden Cause here with Just Be, and we are about to take a spiritual boom. We are at an unprecedented time in human history where we are transitioning from 3D to 5D within the great spiritual awakening. This video and audio podcast is the place for you to find your truth beyond politics, your sovereignty, your voice. Let's kick up your vibration now. By the way, each episode ends with the Just Be practice to do just that. And as we begin the show, just to know a little bit more about me, I'm a soul realignment specialist, meditation master, and dimensional healer. Learn more, and there's merch also at EdenJustBe.com. Let's get this party started. Eden here with Just Be Spiritual Boom in association with the Grassroots Warrior Network. Medical Intuitive, Winifred Adams, welcome back. How are you today? Oh, Eden, nice to be back. Thank you for having me. I'm wonderful. Appreciate this so much. This is great. Good to see you. Yay. Thank you so much. Okay. And a little background. So Winifred was my fourth only guest. So we have her on episode 39. Uh, And up until that point, I had been doing the podcast on my own and it had just gotten to the point where... I, I don't want to expose this stuff anymore. I'm not feeling very good about it. Let's let's have some guests on the show so we can converse. So she came on. So it's going to be so interesting being almost a year and a half later. So we're on episode 127. Also, this is really neat. And I have to tell you about this. When I had you on the last time, my water heater went out. Oh, no, yeah, I remember. Kidding. My air conditioner's out. <laughs> So I knew because I, I I had you on a guest, uh, uh, one of my greatest hits and just reached out and let everybody know, Hey, we've got a greatest hits posted. And you came back to me and you were like, Hey, can we do, do a show again? And typically I do not have reoccurring guests on, but I had a cancellation. So I was like, this would be great. And that there just confirmed. confirmed. It, it was just totally spontaneous. And it was, yes. Confirming it was so good. So before we get started I'm in uh, reading one of friends bio, I, I want to point out my shirt today. Awake and not woke. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And these are my new t-shirt line. So I have uh, collections. Okay. Let me read them. Um, Patriot collection, a conspiritualist collection, a cosmos collection, a spiritual collection. Did I, even, did I already say that? An evolved guys collection. So I love them. So please, please visit my site and look at them. Everyone my- needs a t-shirt. They need a t-shirt. They need something that speaks to this world in a positive way. And that's perfect. I would, yes, I would completely agree. And my heart has gone into all of these. Some of them I've laughed at. So it's so great. All right. Can I move straight to your bio? All right. Okay. And I want to say, I, um, before our interview today, I perused our old interview and it, I'll go ahead and give this lead in. It was so nice because a lot of times I know you have a podcast as well. You have guests on the show that just talk a lot where it's not so much of a conversation and ours was a conversation. So I'm so looking forward to that today. So yay, thank you. Okay. Winifred Adams is a leading medical intuitive and the founder of, I say GAMI, is that right? Or G, say it again. GAMI. GAMI. The Global Association of Medical Intuitives, as well as Making a Life Better, a Brighter LLC. Thank you. A best-selling author of several collaboration books, can I talk collaboration books, including the silver lining of cancer, the power of your inner brilliance, the itty bitty book of holistic healing, manifested blessings and voices of the 21st century. Winifred shares key points of her life and journey as a medical intuitive and her healing career with an emphasis on hard to solve cases. I love this. Winifred is a go-to for people who don't know where else to turn or are seeking conscious connection with their higher self, studying the principles of light and sound under a master teacher for over 25 years. She can Binds her God given gift of medical intuition and quantum healing with direct living, direct living, and ascended master guidance from all of her clients. She is currently offering, we talk some about this, the master course, the Ascension series, with the focus on the Christ consciousness tenets and the science behind the divine within us. She has been a radio show host since 2015 for Making Life Brighter Radio, found on YouTube and Voice America, iHeart, and syndications worldwide. Finally, she is also a Grammy voting musician and has had her music played in almost every country in the world. 
and is a designer of healing jewelry with designs by Winifred Fine Jewelry and ugh, Fine Jewelry with Meaning. Well, hopefully I didn't mess that up too much. You didn't. That was perfect. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> that was a nice welcome. introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so I, I want to go into this first, as I usually do when uh, folks come on the show, we talk about discovering the great awakening in our, in our last interview, you talked about bringers of the dawn being your first impetus into, into that. And I, I'm going to read what that is uh, for folks that don't know compiled from more than 400 hours of channeling by Barbara Marcinic. I'm hopefully saying her name right. Uh, Bringers of the Dawn imparts us to the wisdom of the Palladians, a group of enlightened beings who have come to earth to help us discover how to reach a new stage of evolution. So that uh, was you first seeing that something radical was going to be changing the world. How are you doing right now with everything? Good. It's it's actually a really intense window this month. I'm feeling the energy changes. I'm sure everybody else is. I'm, I've been more tired than usual and I've slept longer and it's kind of like a rejuvenation period as these new energies settle in. It's almost like a gate just opened. We pass through the solstice and here comes this beautiful wave of new energy, this higher frequency that everyone needs to now attune to. They need to adjust to. And so if you're feeling that way, don't feel like it's wrong or something's wrong necessarily. This is a huge surge of energy coming our way and we need to assimilate this in our nervous system. So otherwise things are really good. They're really good. Cool. And just to let you know, there's a little chiming. I don't know oh, if it's that's a, a my bracelet. bracelet on my... Ah, sorry. That's okay. I, <laughs> yes. It's really interesting. So it comes through when you, when you're talking. So I don't know if you want to take it off okay. or if that's okay. All right. Why don't we, because one of the things you want to talk about today, and I think this is really great, um, talking about your meditative intuitive work. Shall we just dive right into that? Let's go right into medical intuition. Let's That's do it. great. Yeah. So medical intuition is the ability for a human being to an organic human being, I might add. <laughs> yes. Good point. <laughs> an organic human being to witness another organic being as if it were an x-ray so i can look into your body and scan your body and see your body like an mri machine or an x-ray and i can see the differentials in energy i can see it in layers i can see it in varying um, layers from organ system to organ system kind of how they connect i can see the differential between different parts of the body all of that is logged and so it becomes a organic uh, biofield puzzle and in looking at that biofield puzzle being an adept medical intuitive is someone that can accurately scan the body that does not mean healing it just means the ability to see the differentials and what's out of balance and the degree that it might be out of balance how long have you been able to do this well i've really been able to do it since i was a little kid I just yeah. didn't have a term for it then. I didn't know that I was doing that then. I didn't know what it was actually. <laughs> okay. And I know you said 25 years. So what, when you were a, a, a child, what, what, what did you see the same thing? How did you process that? What, yeah. What did you do? I think I, I began feeling that was the first thing. I mean, I didn't know that I was intuitive. I just was, mm -hmm. I just was being, but then, you know, when people would come along and they had something and they felt like they were out of balance, I would go up to them and put my hand on them where the imbalance was. And when I did that, they would say, oh, how did you know? It was just right there. And, and then after a little while, it would go away and they'd say, oh, well, what'd you do that? That felt good. So there comes the quantum healing part. But wow. this all was natural. I didn't, I didn't have to study that part. It came naturally. It was inborn. And the rest was remembering from other lifetimes. Mm -hmm. So, and also being tootled in the spirit world with spirit doctors and ascended masters and living masters in real time with people that are either in ICU or in front of you on a table. And you're hearing, you know, like you would be in uh, studying in a medical school and you're in a lab and they're saying, okay, and they're all around working. Well, they are all around working. They're just not seen by everybody. So that's quite a bit how I came to do this and how I've learned. So did you, 
All right, let me see how to ask this. Knowing that you could do this from a child, as a child, then folks came along that could help you with this gift, let's call it, or you started seeking people out. How, how, what, what came first? Well, you know what? I actually made jewelry first. (laughs) That's what came first. I went to school and I thought I was going to be uh, a brilliant translator. Well, I was a translator. I just became a translator of human bodies. (laughs) Yes, exactly right. (laughs) So I thought it was going to take Chinese and French. I did take French. And uh, the only thing I used it for was speaking to a whole bunch of people in LA eventually. But really, I haven't used it in the the manner which I thought. But while I was there, I was learning jewelry making. And it was really a gift I have. I really love it. And it's something I remember from way back in Egypt. And past lives. And it just, again, it came very naturally and it was something good. And then I realized, oh, the propensity of healing with the stones. So that was my first entree into the bioenergy field. And people would commission me to make them pieces sight unseen. And I would hear their symptoms and I would choose the pieces that would work for them. And I would contemplate this at length. And then I would make it exactly as to how it would help the person and their biology. And they kept saying, my gosh, my headaches are gone. My this is, things were happening for them. So they began collecting these. And I, this is what I did through college. And so. Whoa. Then- <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Okay. So with the stones, you automatically could just tell that there's good stuff with them or you could feel the vibration. Okay. Yes. I knew how to combine them so I could get the effect that I needed for the biology of the person. And. Neat. I didn't even know medical intuition then. There wasn't even a word for that. I didn't know healing then. I just did it. It just it just came naturally. And I said, you're going to need this. This is going to help you. And I could tell how and where that would help them. So people collected them all over. And then I began selling in stores across the United States. And then I went on to finish college and took some time off because I'd done a lot of coursework and uh, ended up in... Uh, (laughs) biomechanical rebalancing. And that's some crazy story, but that was the entree into all my healing work because I did this great in-depth physiology work, which segued into really hard cases of people that had gotten in car accidents and they couldn't move and they had no way out. They didn't want surgery, but the doctors wouldn't help them anymore. So everything that was like this, I can't fix it case would end up at my doorstep. And I wasn't, I was basically working in physio, but I wasn't a kinesiologist by degree. And so, okay. So how did this happen? How did you fall into this from jewelry (laughs) stuff and from your translating? Okay. Fill some of the gaps, Winifred. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Cause it's just interesting. There's just, it's kind of like far out stories, but it's my, it's my life. It's, it's a true story. When I got done with college, I ended up working at a bank. I was a teller at a bank for a little while just to, you know, have a job and not think anymore. I'd I'd worked hard for four years. So I was going to give myself a break. And while I was there, this is a true story. While I was there, I was, this lady passed a check through the window to me. And in that moment, she passed a check. A voice said to me, you need to quit your job and become a personal trainer. I'm like, what? (laughs) And the lady looked at me. She's like, are you okay? I'm like, no, somebody just spoke to me. (laughs) She said, huh? And I'm just like dazed, like, okay. So I made a phone call to a friend of mine. And I said, the weirdest thing happened to me today. And he goes, oh my gosh, I have a friend up in Boulder that would be amazing. He's got this special physio program. So I was the last person that entered that physio program. So were you in Colorado at the time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I went to CU Boulder. And so it was great. I ended up quitting my job and going to become this specialist in in biomechanical rebalancing. And while I was there, I had to volunteer for free for a year first and then work with clients gradually after that. It was really in-depth program. So I got to know the ins and outs of biology, your physiology, everything. It was amazing. It was a hinge point for my life. I love that. And then people would come And we needed to get them from point A to point B, but their body systems were out of balance. And I said, well, I need to send you out to like an herbalist or some, a healer or somebody. 
because we need these things fixed over here so we can get done what we need to do here. And they, they wouldn't go. And I said, okay, if I learn this, will you do this? And they said, yes. And I said, okay, I will. So I dug in and it came to me so quickly and so naturally. And it happened so fast that I was just thrown into one thing after another of realizing this. And then I was, it was all clicking. And I would take people sight unseen and I'd say, just let be my guinea pig. Come and sit down. Let me tell you everything about you in your body systems. Don't tell me anything. And I'm going to help you figure out what's wrong with you. And then I'm going to give you kind of a natural prescription as to how to get to a better place. And I was able to tell them exactly. I was able to work with all kinds of people that had chronic things that they couldn't undo. And then suddenly they were gone. I mean, and I was able to explain it right down to the atomic level of what was going on, including so, why they were calling for certain herbs. So why were you looking at this being like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Where, where were you and everything? I loved it. I ah! loved, couldn't get enough of it. I was like, you know, solving a hard puzzle was, was to me a discovery and it made sense because mm -hmm. everything has to add up to the, the end point. It all has to come to the place where it makes sense. This proves this, and this proves this, and this proves this. And that's exactly what I did. And they were very happy. And I created a big clientele there and did that. And that's how, you, that's how I got into that. It, was, it, it just evolved. So the cases became more complex. I moved out of physiology work and biomechanical rebalancing after a while and ended up doing more... Um, healing work so then i had you know difficulty i didn't have difficulty but i had people with difficulty that would come to me and the cases would become really challenging so i'd have to kind of pull on the spirit world for new tools and eventually i evolved to the place where i don't need any of those tools i can use them but i can do it all in energy now nice. so, what, uh, can you tell us uh, one of your your harder cases, knowing that you've evolved, that maybe something that was harder in the past, it wouldn't be that hard now, but yeah, just, is there an interesting case you want to talk about? I have so many great cases, so many. I mean, that's what the fascinating part for me is. Yeah. I should have been a doctor in this to just be official and put a tag on it, but really in a way it was like becoming that it was sort of like a scientist mm -hmm. in a way. It's been a gratifying journey because as you help people that really had no hope, this has been an amazing turnabout. So I'll give you a few. Okay. I had a lady that came in in the beginning of the biomechanical rebalancing, for example, and she'd had spinal fusions, extremely, extremely difficult back pain. Okay. And so I combined what I knew with the physiology work and worked that angle at the same time I helped her from the inside out with her organ systems. And in one month's time, all her pain went away. So I combined at the time with one of the very best chiropractics, chiropractors in the world, Dr. Sean Caldwell, and he worked for the, the Broncos and the Rockies and, and then a rolfer. And we had a hundred percent, hundred percent in our success rate in rehab between the three of us when someone wow. would come along like that. And so these people that were in serious chronic pain, um, they could actually function again. So to me, that was a really winning formula and it made a lot of sense. It was very practical, you know, but another lady came along, she'd been in a car accident, it was terrible. She, heard she had nerve damage and she couldn't walk after a little while. So she'd be going around in her house doing something. And then all of a sudden the nerve feed would stop and she'd be stuck in place until her husband would come home Ugh. to find her standing on the stairs, standing in a room. She couldn't go further. And that didn't make any sense to me. I thought, okay, that's that we can't have that. Number one, <laughs> number two, um, there has to be a connection we can create. So in my mind, automatically, don't ask me how I said, well, we'll just grow the telomeres. We can lengthen the telomeres. We'll get this going. We can make this happen. I don't know how to grow telomeres at the time, but it made sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> there you go. Let's yeah. do this thing. So she came and we did a series of rehab sessions and 
I got those telomeres stimulated, the nerve endings stimulated. And for the first time in years since she'd had the accident, she could go for walks with her husband. She could do mm -hmm. things again. And anytime it seemed to get stuck, we found a way out of it. And I was able to create something she could do and they could live again. So those are big changes for people. I've done cases where a guy fell off a ladder, um, landed on his head. Mm. He basically, he was um, a vegetable within the ICU. They, when I entered, his brain casing was off. You could see his brain and they just didn't really expect him to come back or be able to function. It was really severe. So but, who'd you, who called you in on that one? Did, did, did a spouse or? Yes, went, the okay. spouse. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. the spouse did. But people hear about it, like a friend tells a spouse and so on. So most of my business has all been referral. Yeah. And since at that time, I don't even think I had a website. I mean, people had to poke me for this. They had, will you get a website? You know, like, come on, come into the real world. And by the way, you're a medical intuitive. I'm what? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So. It was, it was really um, a difficult case, took a lot of energy that because basically we had to, we, I say we, me in the spirit world, we had to build a new neural network over the broken neural network in his brain in order to even get his arms and legs to function again, where it never would have worked. So as I studied this, I really got into it and spent a considerable amount of weeks working with this man and bringing him back. And so he would stand next to me in spirit alongside the bed while I was working on his body. And the relatives were watching this. They weren't sure what I was doing, but they were into it. And apparently the, the wife came to me one day and she said, well, do you think he's going to live? Do you think this is, you know, he's going to come back? And I looked at him like, well, and he's kind of looking at me and I'm like, yeah, I think he's, he just is waiting for his body to heal. He needs his body to heal, to come back. Okay. So let me ask. So you, for this work specifically going beside him in the hospital, being there with him physically, regardless of who, who else came in, or did you say, Hey, this, this time needs to be in quiet kind of thing or yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I asked that I do this alone and okay. the only ones that are there are the family members or the nurses. Like I couldn't I couldn't technically um, work with a whole ton of people coming and going and talking. Oh, it was gosh, just, that's, that's hard. Yeah. That's been like that at times. It's really difficult in this well, kind of work. And especially when you're in the ICU. I mean, there's someone, because I've been in the ICU before, people pop in constantly, checking your vitals, all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, they did that. And they would have to do it when I worked them too hard. All the oh, monitors would freak out and go off and they'd go, dee, dee, dee. so they'd come jump in with um, you know, some <laughs> insulin or, or, or something that they wanted to put in them. And I said, look, just don't, don't bother. Don't even do that. And I take my hand off his body and all of the numbers would go back down again. I said, he's just having a heavy workout today. I'm just pushing his systems. And so as soon as I took my hand off, the energy would dissipate again and it would come down, but that's what moved the telomer, you know, telomeres to grow forward quickly. And I did it through sound therapy. I did it through light energy. I did it through quantum healing. I did it through hands-on. I even did it by singing to him and I did. And so he watched all this. He was right there. Okay. And I have to say something. Okay. What is so wild about this is you're in a traditional Western medicine setting. You're doing your awesome thing. And the nurses are coming in because the Western medicine equipment is going off and you basically say, don't do those things. Take your hand off. It stops. Are they looking at you going, what the heck is oh, this? Yeah. <laughs> I Somewhere, bet that was so hard because I'm sure some, yeah, they wanted, they wanted to add insulin or do, do their job. Um, did you end up also getting a rapport with them the longer that you were there? Because they rotated, we never oh, really God. knew exactly who was who, but they watched yeah. me and my job wasn't really. It was all 1000%, 100%, 24-7 thinking about him. Okay. So once I enter these kinds of uh, situations, I'm all in. Like it's, you've got me, I'm totally there. And mm -hmm. so I need that because I'm focusing and I'm monitoring just like those things hooked up to him are monitoring mm -hmm. his progress. And then I know what to do and the approach to take for the next part of 
the next pass that I'm going to do when I enter again. So I'm thinking about this even when I go home. And these people can come and go and they watch and they witness and some are into it and some are not. And it's okay. I don't care. We're not there for that. You know, right. if God, if God is in the angels are coming around this man to help him do this, then, and I don't mean me as God. I mean, if God is in the room coming to support this type of thing, which is true, then <laughs> the other is kind of insignificant. Right. So, right we hold the space for the higher light to come in and the love that needs to come through. And that's really my job is to orchestrate this symphony that's happening in front of us. So the, the wife had a relative call her and say that the relative over in Israel had a dream. And the fellow that was on the table came to that person in Israel and said, hey, I'm okay. I'm really having a nice time right now. And um, I'll be back when my body's better. <laughs> I'm hanging out, having a vacation. It's all good, man. Okay, please proceed. <laughs> so the wife was like, oh, okay. So that, that kind of helped her out a little bit. And everybody was pretty much on board because the progress was happening. Little by little, you know, he was beginning to move his hands and his arms and um, I was able to detect like in advance, I think he has a UTI. I think there's a UTI coming on or this or that. And, and sure enough, that would be what was coming. Just that everyone in the medical is a little slow to respond to those things. That's the beauty of medical intuition is because sometimes we can see what's happening or progressing rather than waiting until it's already there. Mm -hmm. That's very important. So those were miraculous cases. And when he came back and came to, because he spent so much time with me next to me in spirit, he knew who I was. Now I oh. didn't know this man, but when I first walked into his room, he put out his arms to me. That's when he came back to out of the coma, he put out his arms to me and he took me and pulled him to his chest because <laughs> he knew. How rewarding. Okay. Just so you know, there's still some chiming. Uh, we're just going to oh, my, my bracelets. Okay. I um, know. And I, it's probably really good for you to have them on too, but it, yeah. Oh, let's, uh, did you make these? I did. Yeah, okay. So I for did. those who can see, mm, this delicious. is my, yes, yes, yes. I have, it's one of my signature pieces of, this is a, okay. And how, how would you describe it? Oh yeah. How would you describe it for those who can't see? This is a beautiful, um, long black tourmaline necklace and I have a charm on it, but I can make it a bracelet. I can make it a long necklace or I can make it a short necklace or like a choker all in one. And it's very, very helpful. I use it to put over my heart because I would fly a lot. So I'd open it up and extend it down over my heart for the radiation in the airplane. And then I use it when I'm working with people and a lot of energy is going through me. So I have it on my wrist. So that regulates that. And at times I'll need it if I'm going out and interacting with people and I need the energy protection over my thyroid. So I use it that way. So everything I do is kind of functional and it has purpose. It's not random. So most of the jewelry I make, even it has that kind of um, bent to it. Like I've made a lot of rings for people over time that where they're, they would have trouble with the shank because their fingers swell. So I create solutions around that and work with the stones for their, their energy as well. So all of that's near and dear. <laughs> Good fun. Ian, thank you. Can you describe for us in terms of the divine beings that you work with? Like for me, it changes a lot. Is that how it is for you? Do you have a, a team of people or souls that work with you? Can you, yeah, describe that a little bit. I do have a, a basic team of people. Um, but it's a big team of people. Um, some change out according to the person. The person might be drawing in someone, uh, like let's say Kuan Yin is not one that frequently comes up for me, but it might be one that comes up for someone that's come to the table because they identify with Kuan Yin. Or Can you describe who Kuan Yin is? Kuan Yin is a, like a master saint that's of the oriental culture and is a feminine energy that that comes in so if you look up kuan yin you'll you'll see the history and the beauty of 
that saint, but is a very special uh, feminine energy, a very balancing energy. I also have saints like Saint Rita, and Saint Rita is a beautiful saint that is a saint of impossibilities. So she's around quite a bit with what I do. And Saint Rita helps people that have been through a lot of trauma and helps them work back through that trauma and physical ailments as well. Um, I have spirit doctors that come in. I have a lot of masters, ascended masters. Jesus uh, comes to work often with people, Mother Mary. I have um, other gurus and saints that have that come and living masters, those that are enlightened on the earth plane that assist in real time. Um, they're angels, people's angels will come and it's not really about my angels. It's about their angels and their immediate need who interface with the spirit doctors and the masters really. So the master saints are, are kind of the hierarchy. And then from there, like the archangels and some of the council of 13 that come from the central sun, I work with them quite a bit and the council of nine. Um, and also, the, you know, all the Pleiadians, I'm a big Ar Arcturian. And now I'm doing quite a bit of work with the Syrians and uh, Syrians are coming in doing some really powerful transmissions right now. We're doing really incredible silent transmissions and last week we did one on the solstice. It was so much fun. I had a, a lady tell me after the fact that she had this quartz crystal on her belly and she had her shirt on, of course, and she had the crystal resting on top of her belly. And when the transmission was over, she, she said it was so deep. I just like knocked out. I went somewhere else. And I, when I came to, I took the crystal off and it was hot to touch. Wow. And then I lifted up my shirt and you could see the square of the base of the crystal on her skin because it had been so hot. <laughs> so there's quite a bit of transmission energy that's happening, especially at this time to help people up level. And all of these beings come according to who the people are that are in front of me. Okay. So they come based on who's there. Are you knowing that, that transmissions are happening we are evolving. Are your um, connections with people different? Or, I know you just said you're working more with the Syrians. Is that because of where we are right now? Yeah. Yeah. Just the, the nature of their stream of light and the, the field, the unifying field of energy that they have um, is also like a next step in the evolvement. It's helping people accelerate their ability to absorb these frequencies. So let's say all of the star beings bring a different flavor to the buffet. I love that. And they're bringing whatever their favorite platter is. And right now the Syrians are kind of front and center along with, for me anyway, along yeah. with those from the great central sun. Okay. Talk about that. Those from the great central sun. Tell, tell more. That is a beautiful, beautiful gift of evolved beings. Um, the central sun being uh, an inception place for people, and it's all love. It's beautiful. It's way out in the cosmos. And when I take people on the quantum healing meditations, sometimes we go out into the cosmos and come back and move through that so they can experience that space. Mm -hmm. That space is a space of great love, and they're very highly evolved beings. Um, they're like seven feet tall and they're white robed and they're beautiful. They're ethereal, but they're beautiful. And our words don't do it justice. So it's kind of silly to even try to put it to words. It's magnificent. People don't want to come back when they get there. They're like, oh, this is good. Let's stay here. <laughs> I said, I well, you'll imagine. go there. <laughs> oh, man. They're so, so divine, but they help. They help accelerate things in the subtle fields of energy as well. Awesome. Uh, awesome. And that quite doesn't do it justice either. So uh, on the show, uh, since, since having you as a fourth guest a while, we've really um, started opening up not only to what's going on with the great awakening, but more into galactics and cosmos. And, um, you know, because that's a very important hidden 
feature with most people. Uh, like I know my neighbor basically had them over for a while and I have these questions, you know, to bring us all together. And one of my questions was, do you believe in, I said aliens, he said, nope. Uh, so there, there's a lot of people that are shut off from that. And from my perception, again, it's, it's so to really evolve, I guess, uh, tell me what you, what you, what you think of this to really evolve, to connect to that, to know that we are star beings, to know that there's so much more in this world. What, what would you say to that? Well, Eden, you know, I find that, um, everybody really does believe they have something. They just don't always say it. And it nice. might be one way for them for one minute until they have another experience. And then they have an expanded view of that. And then when yeah. they're comfortable, they have yet another expanded view of that. So in all the people I've seen that have come to the place of crossing over, yeah, it's a hundred percent, really. There's nobody that goes out the door that says, I don't believe in anything because they have that feeling that surrenders all that withholding just before they leave. And sometimes they'll cross over and come back in their crossing over process. And when they come back, they go, oh, wow, because they get a taste of it all. Then they mm -hmm. can't deny it any longer. So my advice to people would be stop denying the things that could be and open yourself to what may be because there's a host of loving energy, whatever it might be, around you at all times trying to express itself on your behalf and for you. It's just a matter of being available to it, being receptive to that. And let me drink that in for a second, figure out how to re re say that. So just, just being flexible and open. Being open to the possibility. And that's, that's really where it's at because you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And that's the same with, as I'm showing you in my career, I didn't know what I didn't know, but in a way I kind of remembered pretty quick once I got into it, but mm -hmm. I had to have somebody come along with that need for it to present and then i would go oh, okay we'll pull that tool out oh we'll learn this tool and the same with belief systems and in the way our world is as one person opens and holds a greater frequency somebody will catch wind of that frequency and say oh that feels good what's that right so they'll yes. by default kind of catch it catch it are you also noticing that more people are tipping into that and in terms of even believing in what you do um not that oh josh we're at this point and no one else can help so we're going to call winifred and and knowing someone else said that she did a really good job is that opening up even more i think that it's not as necessary actually because more people are open now it's there's there's not that great twisting of the arm any longer and maybe it's because i'm just focused on people that are already kind of open and then I take them to even more of a wow level of open. So I'm ready for those folks that are, you know, I don't have to do the 101 heavy lifting of let me convince you this is real. I'm right. not a circus animal. I'm not here to uh, prove to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm here. It's like saying to your doctor or your surgeon, prove to me that you can do this. Well, I'll prove it when I'm in it and doing it. How's that? <laughs> then you'll know. So. so even if there was, let's say a client that didn't believe, but also knowing that you work with the highest good. So is that even the heavy lifting there, even though a part of them knows that it's okay? Does that, does that make sense at all? Well, it all works. I mean, if someone already has an understanding of any kind, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's common ground to begin with there. So I'm not, I'm not in a position of trying to convince people of anything. I'm here to help them optimize what they've come for. And then if it looks like there's more that's needed or could be unfolded, which is usually the case, because usually when you get into something physical, there's a reason it got there and you have to unravel it backwards. And then we get into consciousness and the consciousness development is a really interesting evolvement for people. So it just becomes self-evident. Okay. Talk about that. The consciousness development. What do you mean? Well, you know, like 
I told you I'm doing this Ascension series. Yeah. And uh, I had people start out with this and it's pretty intense. We've done um, meditation intensives. We've done challenges. They've done 160 day meditation challenges where they're up doing two hours every day. We're at it every single day, things like that. When you didn't even know you could sit for an hour and then you're doing two or three hours in the course of a month daily, it changes you. There's a perspective that you end up having that's different. So I give people these challenges within this course so that they can begin to practically integrate the things that we're talking about. And the course is based on the Christ consciousness or any master consciousness, the consciousness of all that is, the science behind the consciousness, the quantum in the field of the atomic um, energy and how that comes together to make you why that is ingrained in you the way it is and why it's difficult for people to maybe come to this realization of other and why it's taken so long because it's it's really an in-depth process but when people begin to practically try on what is necessary for the changes in them to evolve or come to spirit then they start to have this oh well now i feel better oh that feels good it's just as natural. And this is a combination of a deep, deep dive with homework, with tools, with everything combined with the practicality of learning about the masters, learning about the science, and then coming into this space of correction and learning to manage your own energy. And so with that management comes responsibility, or the responsibility comes the delight of discovery. And here we are. But I notice with a lot of folks in terms of discovering their power and their energy within things, and then having a lot within their world needing to shift because it's not harmonizing. Let's put it that way. A lot of my clients can move forward and a lot of them are like, that's enough. With your intensive, it basically sounds like too, when people are committed to doing that, they're like, okay, let's bring it on. Let's, let's just do this. So I don't, I don't imagine that people that come to that class are like tentative or because. Oh, they have been. Oh, they have been. And people are there because their egos come out front and center. It can be really challenging. I mean, we've tussled a bit and I've said, you know what, this is normal. It is because you're working out where the ego is resistant to the change. So that's a normal way within all of this kind of consciousness work or attunement. But as they continue to receive the reward of that, the self-reward, then they see that there's a benefit. And yes, they are changing and the world can see they're changing. The world around them can comment that they're changing. So there's a definitive marker of shifting. Yes. And I I really appreciate you saying that too, because I've had several people tussle with me too. And it's, it's, it's okay because a lot of times they've never been able to speak these words to someone else. So really working on not being defensive, being there for them to express and then going, Hey, you're expressing and really calling out the, the truth of that so they can see it. So, um, it's nice to hear that from you too, because it is, it's, it's, even if you're solid and grounded, still, when you have someone right in front of you with anger and all that energy, it's still. Oh, it can do a number on you. I know my body, my body speaks to that. It's people wonder, you know, how come you're not like your lift self? I'm like, well, I take on a lot. It's, (laughs) it's a bit of a battle sometimes, but yes, yes, there is a, there is a definitive energy that people because they're learning how to manage right they don't know how to manage their energy and so they're or they're not even aware emotions right Mm -hmm. they're they're pinging it to yeah people and it can yeah that can hit you it's not fun Uh, no and and most of the time would you say when you're in this tussle um well i i imagine it doesn't always work out but most of the time do people within your work get aligned to it and realize that they're 
Okay. That's so gratifying. And I'm assuming you have seen major change, not only in the work that you do, but in classes like this, major changes within people, because that is a, that is a big commitment for someone to meditate for two hours, three hours a day. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's, those are the challenges, meaning I set up a challenge and they can choose if they want to do the challenge or not. That's separate from the course really, but it helps as an adjunct to the course so that they get the real sense of discipline and dedication mm-hmm. toward change but they they tend to um be all in because they notice what's going on and then at some point the ego kicks in again and that's normal like <laughs> i said it just it just is it's part of human yeah. nature right otherwise we'd all be enlightened by now we'd all be right. to a better place it's just the way that it's hardwired so you have to have compassion for that and patience and Otherwise, I think that most people put in their best foot and um, even if they bring their stinky self to the table, I'm pretty lovingly tough. So, you know, I've been an athlete most of my life and I've been in cases of a lot of living and dying. So I don't take a lot of BS from people and I Mm kind of lovingly set the tone that this is what we're doing because really it would be on me if I'm not steering them in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And taking them through that, the, the rough waters kind of coming out the other side and they realize, oh, those waters weren't so rough. Like we created the rough waters. Yeah, you did. So onward. <laughs> onward. Let's do this thing. And and probably like I can relate to that too. It's kind of like um, this is what it is. If this doesn't fit for you, go on your way because I got people that want to do this yes. and it's okay if you go on if you go over there or whatever, um, it's just not time for you right now, but there will be time for you at some point as there is for everybody. I do want to go into the practice in a moment because I'm very curious with what you're going to deliver for us today. Is there anything else you want to touch on first? Well, you mean in medical intuition? Is that what we're talking about? Whatever. Yeah. If that's where you want to go, or if there's something else that's, um, uh, not parallel with that. Yeah, you do. You. Well, the medical intuition, I just, as we're speaking about medical intuitives, the reason I formed the global association is to set up, to bring together in the world, medical intuitives, and then really have uh, a real genuine um, grouping as we move forward into this next bit of time where people are vetted because it's a little bit of the wild west out here. Suddenly, like everybody's the resident psychic. And that's not what we're doing here. This is a really professional skill set. It's a profession. It's not a weekend warrior situation. It's not like fly by night. I'm making it sound simple, all summed up, but this has been, you know, I work seven days a week, many, 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 many years. I have been sort of like the doctor on call for a lot of people at all times. And it takes great fortitude, great strength to do some of this kind of quantum healing work coupled with that at that level. And so those of us that are kind of leading the trail of medical intuition and even quantum healing in the world are very strict about ethics, very strict about having the wherewithal to be able to say no to someone if they aren't the fit that needs to be at that moment, but also having quite a bit of discernment into what we're doing and what what we're bringing to the table and what we're helping with and that's really important for people to know that this is not kind of you know oh well we'll get a reading and see what you say i don't do that anymore i work with people that really need help and i've always learned that you know somebody just needs a second opinion maybe i would do that but i primarily work with people in terms of packages or um, five hours or 10 hours because they need that. That's where we get the work done. This is not, uh, and they see that once we get into it. Usually they even do more than that. And some people that are heavy cases have worked with for a few years in the unfoldment of their consciousness as they move through different things. But it's more of, we aren't dancing bears as psychics that part is natural to looking into the body and seeing what we can see and then helping people through that in powerful ways that can get them from point a to point b 
And so to clarify again, quantum healing is something that I've done since I was a kid as well. And that was natural too, and has been even heightened along the way with the work of the masters and so on. And so that's been a tremendous gift to work alongside them and have them um, speak to and work through and people feel that. And so most of my work right now since COVID has been remote around the world. And um, I do have people in person and people come to me, they fly to me and they stay and see, see me. And I'm in the process of getting ready, ready to build a center. So I want to do a quantum healing center and the center will be um, germane to all this work. And I'm looking forward to that. I have a book that's going to come out, I've got apps that's going to come out, kind of make this sort of people can wrap their head around it in one space. And so it's not so, um, you know, wild west to them, but it makes more sense. And really like right now, I'm going to spend the summer, I'm going to do more uh, eye readings. Do you know what those are? I, I uh read. Iridology? Yes. 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 That is a big, big, big tenant to some of what I see in, in cases. And I love doing that. So I'm going to do that more where I get to see exactly what's going on in a body system through the iris, but I can also pull in all the other things I see at the same time. So it's kind of a, a two in one and that's really fun. Whoa, that's exciting. All right. So uh, thank you so much for talking about that too. But uh, basically to reiterate that th this work is is serious. It's not like, you know, especially if you're going to be called on, it's not, I'm going to be called on just to show you I can do stuff. Like, yeah, if you need me, I'm here and this is serious work for me. So take me seriously. How how many people at this point do you have um, within the global association? I am revamping that right now. Okay. I set it down at COVID um, to move it into a different position. Yeah. And now we're now we're working to redo this globally. And I'm about to launch it again coming in September. Oh my gosh. Okay. And um, so people can come in and look and join on, but there's going to be a whole new hat coming in September that's going to be setting the stage globally. So I'm excited for that. And uh, it's not, it's more the quality of people that want yeah. to come and I'll have it broken down as people can see on the website where there's people that are the working medical intuitives and then people that just kind of want to be part of the fray and, and check it out and be a part of the community of it because it is a serious thing. And with this work, I want to really reiterate we can talk about medical intuition and all the things that are going on out there, similar to doctors talking about cases. Yeah. But with people's lives, we don't really broadcast things that are so intimate about them. It has to be very kind of generic in that way. You see what I mean? Because there's an ethics to it. Mm -hmm. And I can talk about cases, but I have to be sensitive to what we're discussing and what we're doing now you, it would be like saying you know understanding <clears throat> excuse me reiki and different people will come in and be on a table for reiki with all kinds of different things and then you can talk about the things that happened that were really neat in that healing but um we have to also be sensitive to confidentiality in this so there's a fine line there <laughs> I'd like to say a lot of things, but there's a fine line there. Very nice. Okay. Really good description too. And thank you for adding that as well. All right. Shall we move into the just be practice? Okay. So we have choices in what, what we want to do today. The practice, I was waiting to see kind of the feel for what we would talk about and where we would go and, yeah. and make that um, kind of a, 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 uh, determiner of what they would ask me to do. So I don't really do a lot myself, to be honest with you. They sort of tell me what I'm to do and how I'm going to meet that according to who's in front of me and what I need to do. So I was thinking instead of a practice that we do a healing because awesome. the transmissions of these healings are pretty pronounced and people usually feel that. Would that work for you? Oh, of course. Okay. So I'm going to use you as my surrogate for the healing. 
All right. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Are we, are we live with people or are we going to be live with people? Going to be live in two weeks. Great. Okay. All right. So that tells me the audience that we're going to seek. Okay. All right. And usually I can feel that even in my own audiences when I do this, it's really interesting. All right. So what I'm going to have you do, and this is going to be for everyone. Okay. So everyone can do this as, along with, and you'll all get something out of this. Um, but I'm going to use our beautiful host as um, our surrogate and the pass through for everyone else as well. All right. So we're going to call on all the masters and the divine white light beings and the council of 13, the council of nine. We're going to ask our friends from the Syrians to come and be with us. And they're already here, actually. Uh, we are going to come into this field of healing in this divine space and make sacred space right here, right now, in this now time. And so I use the quantum grammar to uh, help us deep dive into the space. So I'm going to speak some quantum grammar first and you feel it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to move into what's next. So here we go for this now hyphen space is with the healing by the love hyphen light hyphen balance for the love is with the divine hyphen correction of the souls with this time by this now hyphen space. Now you might start hearing a kind of a sound in your right ear. If you hear a pitch there, just hold that. When you're pitching your right ear, just focus on that, not the left side, but just, just the right side. For the masters are with the healing by the divine hyphen light with this now hyphen space. You should feel that come through your forehead now. Begin to come into your third eye. And you'll feel a combination of turquoise and indigo light coming in through the third eye. Just breathe that into your being and let it circulate through your blood. Feel that moving up through the frontal lobe and into the crown area. And through the crown comes a divine, pure column of white light. And let that gently just come down in through the crown, through the brain, all the way down through the brain stem and into the cervical spine. Breathe in deeply and exhale all static. And then let that continue down your spine and out your tailbone. Now the Syrians are adding a blue thread to that. You're going to feel an up-leveling through your tailbone. And this is working into the DNA of your being. You might feel your body expand just a little bit. Breathe in that indigo light again and exhale all gray, all question marks, all doubt, let go. Just open and let go. with each breath of the turquoise indigo ray, you'll expand a little bit more. Now you'll feel one of the divine beings with a hand on the chest and the heart chakra and a hand on the back sealing some of the energy through the heart chakra and what this is doing specifically for you Eden is it's helping to undo doubt doubt about the world where are we going where is this headed what's happening right now dissolving all of the unknowns into a space of just being and just knowing that this is okay right here right now in this now hyphen space 
you'll feel it come over you and the transmission come down through you now through the crown through the body knowing that you're expanding up into the 11th chakra into the 22nd chakra feel feel the expansion of your height you're 10 feet tall 10 feet wide moving with the divine guided light mother mary has come in to bless people in the blu-ray and that the blu-ray travels through the nervous system and through the heart and relaxing the feminine light ray now we're going to do a correction in the chakra systems and a divine blessing starting at your crown breathe a deep breath in of the beautiful turquoise light and indigo through your third eye again and exhale through the throat chakra now the council of 13 has shown up they're in a circle around us here and you'll feel a calming energy coming down through you on the back side especially we're moving into the third eye at this point pulling on the divinity of the syrians to help correct all the third eyes that will hear this transmission you'll feel it in your knees you'll feel it down to your ankles just a whole body correction coming in at this time the power of the blessing coming through the correction through all time is the dna is affected and moving into more harmony within the nervous system for the dna expansion and the beings from the central sun are anchoring in subtle frequency that loving energy into your system moving into the throat chakra at this point and expanding the throat chakra you'll feel it all the way around the sides of your neck and moving out in front of you now breathe in through the throat chakra and breathe in white light there and exhale all static again through the lungs And just gently breathe in and out there kind of open that pathway now we're going to move into the heart chakra and this time we're going to breathe in the emerald ray deep into the heart chakra we're going to pull that forward and let it circulate through the whole heart chakra and the balance of the ascended masters is coming in now as if they are holding your heart in their palms of their hands a blessed gift restoring the heart energy in your body at this time restoring your knowingness through your soul and your spirit of who you be at this time here on earth and that you will in fact pull and draw on this energy forevermore this is the gift moving down into your solar plexus as you breathe again in through your third eye now pull the 
indigo light through your third eye, run it through your whole body. And now we're going to pull golden rays into the solar plexus as well. Here, there's a correction specifically in you, Eden, for um, spleen energy and liver energy and some pancreatic, but mostly liver and spleen. You feel grounding in this correction as it fills into the space and moving down into the second chakra. Feeling the anchoring and correction of the other warehouse of all of your thinking. And your true health sits here in this warehouse right here in the second chakra. We're gonna draw an orange jasper for this area and pull the frequency of orange jasper into jasper into this chakra system right now. And you'll feel the Syrian hand go on your back again. Kind of feel a surge through your body at that point. Might feel it in your brain actually, but it's working there. And then moving down into the first chakra, we're going to put focus to that. The anchoring, the grounding, and taking that ruby ray and pulling it into this area for divine healing at this time. We're asking for the highest white light energy to combine these chakras and systems for harmony, for balance, for quantum healing through all time in this moment right here, right now. And for extended family, that energies will go out by the divine light of the Christed light of all the masters of the source being and all of the Council of 13. That these souls here are blessed, integrated, expanding in joy and love, which is their birthright here and now. For this now hyphen space is with the healing by the divine hyphen light for the masters are with the gratitude of the seat of these souls for this balanced hyphen harmony by this now hyphen space and so it is thank you thank you thank you how 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 deep breath in and release again. You should be more expanded and feel more integrated from head to toe, especially in your third eye area. I'm coming back now. And you can open your eyes. I need just a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Winifred, what a yes. gift. Yep. So uh, this will be replayed on my greatest hits as well as on our show, because it feels like the more people that can do this, the better as well. And thank you so much for um, having me be the surrogate, but also working on me personally. I um, am very touched by that. A little tear is probably going to come out of my eye. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, oh. absolutely. More, more happened than you realize. So it'll, it'll keep integrating Oh, I, yeah. and it'll, it'll keep moving for you and expanding. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. So thank you for having Good. me today and getting to be back. <laughs> you are welcome. All right. Uh, well, I will do one. Um, I'm going to put all your links, uh, and all the, the, the things yet on, um, what they see on YouTube. Do you want me to do the making life brighter or the Winifred.net? Uh, making life brighter. Okay, Winifred.net is music, you. but <sighs> making life brighter is where I do all this healing okay. work and people can reach me. It's really simple. Making life brighter at yahoo.com. Okay. Awesome girl. Well, thank you again for all that you are doing in the world, knowing that you are working a lot and thank you for much so much for making the time to come here with us today. 
Um, okay. Uh, and if you can stick with me just for a second so we can stay, say goodbye offline. All right, y'all. Awake, Thank you not for woke. This you are welcome. All right. See y'all soon. Love it. Thank you, Winifred. Y'all find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, True Social, as well as Rumble, BitChute, YouTube, plus a plethora of other audio directories like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So like, subscribe, do it all. See ya.